I tried to go a day without making a Anthony video. I really did. I was actually outside most of the day. But I got a lot of text messages, a lot of emails, and it seems like that the Wesley individual is still part of the operations. The plumber, who was, quote, investing a million dollars in watches, seems to be in a shady business. Not exactly clear what the relationship is, but uh, he is trying to sell Anthony's watches. Many of them may be stolen. Now, in this video series, uh, we see day two, he's made $0, and he's paid $7,400. And now he has a total debt remaining of whatever you combine the two days. The fact that some people believe this is real is hilarious. Like, he doesn't owe exactly $5 million, okay? That's a very, very... Uh, round number that's a number that is very clean typically when you owe money um, I mean even if you go to Costco it's really hard to buy something exactly on the dot of taxes I don't think Anthony actually knows how much money he owes that the five million dollars could be very high it could be very low uh, he might owe I mean it, it's a scenario where he might owe less than five million dollars right I think the primary problem and the reason that the payback is going to be so painful to watch is he doesn't actually know how to structure his debt because he simply does not know how much debt he has. One of the ways to go bankrupt is to spend like crazy and not understand where you're spending your money. What would be more, far more interesting than pretending to pay people back would be looking at Anthony's expenses and seeing where did he spend money? What is the Lambo lease? If he truly wanted to make this type of document style to teach younger people, and I think it would have a tremendous, and this is what I'm saying, Anthony has put himself in a position that most people will never find themselves in at this extreme level. But because it's so extreme, we watch and it's a train wreck. But these are lessons that at the less extreme level, let's say that you have a small business of your own, like mine, um, I can actually appreciate. How do we save money? Are we going to cut employees? Are we going to cut overhead? Are we going to cut filming quality? Are we going to cut Darby and Liz? I mean, what do we give them as severance? That would be interesting. So instead of trying to always promote money, 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 I mean, one of the biggest things, the reason this has gone belly up is because that he has a expensive lifestyle. I would love to see how he is doing what he's doing to reduce that expensive lifestyle. Now it seems like he is not a road date. I and mean, there's a lot of questions I have. If for instance his commercial foot traffic, I mean, did he move out of his Rodeo Drive? Uh, I don't know. The financial I mean, it probably would be yes. The answer should be yes, but the, is he still paying a lease? Uh, these previous videos indicate that he may not be because typically he makes these phone calls in his office, and we have not seen him in his office for a while. And that is a good way to reduce your expenses. Is he really keeping track of everything in a notebook? I, I hope to God not, not this type of uh, debt. I hope he's using QuickBooks. I hope that he has a CPA or at least a bookkeeper to help him. There is a ton of things that we can learn. Um, but the first thing that he has to do is cut expenses, which he's not showing us, right? What is the next car? Who's driving you? Trevor, if everyone's gone, who's driving you? Are you Ubering to these places to make videos? Or do you still have your Radio Drive commercial lease? Um, how long was that lease? Did you renegotiate? What what happened there? Did you buy out? There was a buyout option. There is a ton of things that if he actually did want to make things right, we can learn as business owners. And this has been always my um, attraction to Anthony and his business is he takes risk that I have won at one time and make like many business owners. I one time thought maybe we take that risk. I don't know. But this is not the way to do it. This is so fake that I, I can't even, you know, if this is the video series where we pretend to pay people back and we pay them in tiny, tiny little increments, 
that's not how business works, right? Um, business is not like this. I can tell you from my own experience, business flows and ebbs. And when business is hot, then you ride it out and you could pay. There is a scenario where Anthony gets out of this. And let me paint you this scenario. If the majority, it almost it would have to be almost everybody, agree to take a payment plan, Anthony is not going to be liable criminally because these people have agreed to take a payment plan. So even though their watches have been uh, taken and stolen, if you will, uh, they have agreed to get recompensated for that via a very slow drip payment plan. So now the majority of them agree to that. Uh, and you might say, why would they agree to that? Well, because like Anthony has so valiantly suggested, what are their options? If they don't agree to it, then they don't even get any money, right? They're just, if you go to report a crime, the police don't give a damn. They're going to throw the guy in jail. They're not trying to recover. The police are not experts in recovery, right? And neither is the court. You're still going to be out money. At least here you're getting $1,000, $2,000. So a lot of people logically say, uh, why, why would these people take a deal like that? Because they don't have a better option. And it's unfortunate they don't have a better option. And had they had a better option, maybe they wouldn't have consigned with Anthony to begin with. Now, does that excuse Anthony for his behavior? Absolutely not. But I think he has a plan. The plan is just not going to work, but there is the guise of a plan here. The plan is everyone get everyone back on pay repayment plans and slowly pay everyone at a snail's rate and force them everyone into this repayment plan on camera or whatever and then slowly pay people back by selling other people's properties. So day one, he made $2,500. Day two, he made $0. That He's only making $1,250 a day to pay back a $5 million debt. The Zell, and, the, and, and, and this is why th this doesn't make any sense. The debt wasn't $5 million if you had extra money in your bank account that belonged to these people. What you should have done is immediately pay out all the money that you had left to these people as best as you could, and then... You know, then your debt would start. Your debt does not start until you have no money. And it doesn't make any sense. Like, I could say I owe a five million. I owe you. I owe my consignees five million dollars. Buy five million dollars in a bank. It's not debt. I just have the money in the bank. So the fact that he's only made twenty five hundred dollar profit in two days should be quite concerning. Uh, many people suggest that he was hiding watches. I, I think it's even easier than that. I think he just has money in the bank. You know, I think there's money in the chase that he can sell from. And he's just got to figure out, he's just got to reduce his expenses to the point where it's not draining his bank account all the time. The one worry about Anthony is not the revenue. It's not the, it's not any of these numbers. The one worry is the number that you don't see. And that's how much money he's spending or the expenditures. How much money are Lambos? How much money is Darby costing you? How much money is Liz costing you? How much money is Z costing you? Payroll is an incredible expense. What is your payroll look like right now? It should be close to zero. But are you still paying Darby? Are you still paying Liz? Like these are unknowns, right? So the one thing I would love to see in, in terms of like getting the books open and being honest, Anthony, we need to know how much money you're spending. How much money do you spend on your apartment? How much money do you spend on the gym? How much money do you spend on... We need to know all this stuff because at the end of the day, your consignees, right? They're dependent on you paying them out in a timely manner. And if you have these expenses that are just eating at the bank account all the time, uh, that's going to interfere with that. So what I would like, and if Anthony is honest and he does... I mean, at least he has, I mean, how many times do somebody got to trick you, right? Um, let me tell you another story. If you guys, uh, story time, so I will save story time for the, and it's like my story time. So instead of, I, I know I people said it was not a snake, it was a scorpion, which makes sense. Because I was like, how can a snake sit on a frog? It must be like a tiny snake or something. But anyway, let me tell you a story time. Um, so a husband finds um, 
uh, an employee he had for 20 years taking cash out of the till. So he owns a grocery store. He finds an employee that's been working there for 20 years, take money from the till. He catches her, and now he's trying to make a decision. And so he goes to his wife at, at night and says and explains the situation. Oh, she's been loyal for all these years, and she's been a great uh, employee, and this is the only time I've ever caught her. And the wife says, you know, and he's trying to determine if he should let her go, like redemption, right? Allow her to continue to work. And the wife says, this is the first time, this is not the first time she stole from you. This is the first time you caught her, which indicates that she probably stole many more times. And then she's just so brazen this time um, that she was caught. And often the boss is not around, right, to look at all the employees, right, or to, you know, this was before the uh, invention of the cameras. This is a, I believe, a Jewish tale, right? Um, if somebody is Jewish and has heard of it, please let me know the name of it. And I learned it from NYU, and I always remembered it was like, hey, that kind of makes a lot of sense to me, right? Just because you caught somebody doing something once, right? Like, let's say you caught somebody cheating on you, you caught somebody lying on you, isn't that doesn't indicate that that's the only time they lied or cheated or stole from you? That indicates that they're they have a pre they may have done it multiple times, and you having caught them because they've been more careful in the past. Just because Anthony is omitting this $5 million debt does not mean this is the only debt he has. And that would concern me gravely, right? Uh, $5 million is such a flat number or such a, you know iconic number. I would be very concerned. Um, and I love that tale very much. I tell it sometimes on the other channel, um, which actually didn't get any videos today. But okay, they're, 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 they're uh, watching... You guys are blessed, right? You guys, I care more about this channel than other channels. Other channels are watching effing Lego videos. They're, they're literally watching videos of me putting Legos together, and that's the only content they really get today. Because <laughs> I ran out of videos. I was, uh, I met a friend uh, who came over from China and uh, basically spent as much time this weekend as possible. Anyway, uh, that is it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below but remember you know you can trust people you can like people but if you catch somebody doing something and they admit that they've done something don't think it's the first time they did it because it's unlikely the probability is not like that 